Hope you can hear me and welcome to this event which is with Jennifer Rock with the it's a big part of the Dublin Book Festival. I hope you're doing okay. I hope you've got your cups of tea and you're ready to talk about skin. Jen are you there? I'm here. There, Rock? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really well how are you? I'm delighted I'm great I'm in really good form so I've got a few questions because everyone is buzzing about your book okay everybody's so obsessed with their skin everybody wants to be beautiful even in a lockdown um and look we've got loads to talk about so are you up for it? I think just people want skin like yours because when I met you first and <laughs> you were doing we were working at an event together and your skin is just immaculate so I think I need to interview you and what you use oh. what you don't use but anyway do you know what, Jen? I would say I'm lucky. I've I've got the good genes. Like my granny, my grandma sadly passed away in the late 70s yeah. and she didn't have a wrinkle on her. So I'm praying that the spirit of grandma Joanna will stay with me. <laughs> How much can be said for genetics? And then I always describe it as you, it's almost like an it's inheritance, isn't it? So you can either really reinvest back into it or you can hope for the best because so many people will say to me, um, I have really good skin. My mom has really good skin. But it's yeah. actually about trying to get the right ingredients to make sure that you don't just lean on genetics. But you are one of those people yeah. that I'll, I'm I envious. Know, no. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I do. I, I use my products. I, I listen to what you say. I do take your advice. But um, so, Jen, for a few people that maybe don't know who you are, do you prefer Jen or Jennifer? Either or. Okay, I always feel that's good. Jennifer's that's very professional, <laughs> but it's so long to say. Okay. If it's that extra, if for either or, happy out. Either or. Okay, so Jennifer Rock, it's very <laughs> wonderful to have you at the Dublin Book Festival event. Okay. So this is your second book, but for people who don't know who you are, the couple of humans <laughs> out there, would you let us know why you, you're the only person I know in this whole country in Ireland, maybe the world, who is known as the skin nerd. Okay. How did that happen? Why are you the skin nerd? I suppose like many people, I would have had spots as a teenager and it truly affected how I felt in myself. So yeah. I yeah, I just and I got teased for it. Nothing, nothing worth commenting on to an extent, but it definitely would have affected my self-esteem. And I suppose for me now to this day, that part probably gives me a lot of empathy and allows me to understand how skin can truly affect more. It's not just aesthetic, it can affect how you feel, whether you'll go for a job interview, you know, how confident are you actually within your own skin? So I suppose that spiraled an interest at a very young age and I did an awful lot of work experience throughout my school years and just immersed myself in skin so I qualified as a beauty therapist and I'm still in college to this date uh, mid-pandemic you can still train because education is obviously key but my goal is always just to keep growing and learning and I surround myself with so many different people that live and breathe skin when I was working abroad I worked mm -hmm. in London for a period of time yeah. Um, I've had the luxury of working for different skincare companies that were based mm. in America. So I had to teach out of Miami. It was tough, Nadine, to be I'm honest. Sorry, you were teaching in Miami. I've never yeah. heard this story. What um, was that like? <laughs> hot, but amazing. SPF was key. But I suppose the reality is that I'd managed to meet so many different people, which actually this book is, is like a physical manifestation of that journey insofar as that yeah. I worked with plastic surgeons. I worked alongside psychologists, dietitians, gym, like PTs. And I really realized when I came back to Ireland then that I wanted to bring that philosophy. I wanted people to understand yeah. that skin wasn't just like, you know, this, it's not just yeah. cleansing and seruming. Although people want me to say it is, it often isn't. So yeah. ultimately that's, yeah, that's a little bit about my background. I suppose I've been in yeah. here for 15 years now. Genuinely love it. It's my passion and my career all together. And yeah, yeah, to have a second book out is, is pretty much a pinch me surreal moment. And thankfully, people are constantly contacting us on social media. <laughs> people are contacting us. I have the book. I have the book. <laughs> have you read it, Nadine? Will I do a pop quiz? That's what we need to do. What does it say on page 88? <laughs> oh, that's a great one. So, okay. So I understand that this is obviously your second book. 
So my big thing is, even if I have an author I love, I would like to know which book do I go to for what? So if I'm new to the Jennifer Rock Skin Ingredients franchise, where do I go first? Yeah, fair point. So I think the first book is called The Skin Nerd. So it's all about skincare regimes, what to use, what not to use. So if you're trying to build a regime for yourself, there's everything in there from book to from from one end of the book to the other, book cover to book cover. The yeah. second book, I suppose, is it's fair to say the world is a different place two years on. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Whether the world definitely is, the skin world 100% is, things like sustainability are key, there's so much about skin positivity as a movement, um, mm. technology has changed, ingredients have changed, new brands are on the market, so it's yeah. not a topic that stays the same, the core will always stay the same, the science and the philosophy piece, but what I yeah. want to bring into this book was actually what I was starting to say earlier, I yeah. interviewed an awful lot of different qualif qualified people, so I'm happy to be a beauty therapist, but if you have example a medical condition, then I I can't I can only help to a degree yeah. so I want to alongside mm. so I interviewed like a dermatologist all the different qualifications I mentioned earlier I brought those into this chapter and people can really understand what is out there and then nerd network is part of um my nerdy world where we have 15,000 yeah. clients and honestly Nadine I wanted to bring <laughs> real questions from real humans as you said yeah. I wanted to yeah. bring uh, so we compiled their frequently asked questions and made a whole chapter out of it so I honest to god believe that if you have a question out there there's a high probability it's in this particular chapter in the book because it's something that we get asked regularly and then I wanted to create mm -hmm. sheets because skincare is so freaking confusing one yeah. brand is okay, the other brand's um, okay how do you know yes. yeah and there's so much there's so much choices out there so um I, I tell you one thing that I've noticed and I want you to comment on this is that I used to work in makeup I don't work in makeup as much anymore oh, yeah. but when I did I'd always have women say over over 40 over 50 over 60 say but is that right for me yeah is that the thing I I'm older now is that the right thing yeah. for me and you know or, or they've used the same thing from when they were 16 yeah for like 50, 60, 70 years. So I always kind of, my response was always like, well, if it works, keep doing it, you know? But like you said, science is advanced, there's new information. And then I think we get a bit bombard, bombarded by it all. So how do we, how do we turn all of that uh, noise sort of into what's right for the person, whether they're 60, 20, 30 or whatever? Goodness, amazing question. And I think you're Sorry. right. <laughs> oh, there's so many parts in like where do I start? The okay. the first thing I suppose I'd say is that yes, there tends to be two types of clients typically. One is mm -hmm the one that loves the trends the newness and perhaps doesn't often give a product enough time you need to give a product with 28 days in order for you to see a true difference really so anything if you try a new moisturizer serum face wash whatever you should give it a month before you kind of see the results yeah ultimately so patience is a virtue oh, and okay. needs it's not like makeup where you put on a lip and you're like I love it it's just yeah. You, need, you do need patience it is science you're working with you're working with formulations and you're working with an organ and ultimately when you apply a product by and large what you're trying to do in this day and age which is as you say skincare has evolved again the purpose of the book yeah. is bring the newer technology to light yeah. is yeah. when you apply a serum it doesn't sit on the surface of the skin it tries to penetrate into the lower layer of the skin and create an yeah. impact and actually help the layer that's the layer that's creating the skin cell itself. So it's not just superficially here, it's actually trying to get into where the skin is made to make that cell healthier than any cell that's made after. It's basically like trying to get into a really pregnant woman and make that pregnant person as healthy as possible to make the baby as healthy as possible. That's probably okay. the best. Okay. So, yeah, you're trying to work that deep into the skin. Bearing in mind yeah. that deep is actually only as thin as a piece of paper. It's not that it's very hard to get ingredients into the skin. Point yes. is, if you're doing that, it takes about 28 days for you to see a difference because it's not just it's not just sitting and looking pretty. It's trying to get in and have a function. So to go back to your point, then there's other people that then will come to me and say, oh, you know, I've been using the same skincare product for 40 years and they're afraid to change. And I'm like, well, what difference? Yeah. Like, what are you seeing? And nine times out of 10, the answer tends to be, well, I'm not, you know, I don't react to it. People, particularly on this beautiful island of ours with four seasons in one hour. I know, that is so true. My gosh, so true. Island weather. Yeah. yeah that's a but we 
miss talking about the weather. Now it's just a how are you? You're like, ask me about the rain. Give out to you about the, the sun. Um, I miss those conversations. But the point is that like people do, people do use a skincare product for so long because they're afraid to try something new. And I do agree with you. I think it's such a saturated market. It's overwhelming. Yeah. And there's so much conflicting and contradicting information out there. And all yeah. those aside, not just because we're here to talk about the book, but that was the purpose behind the book. So to okay. have as to like what to use in your 20s 30s 40s is it much different what should I use if I'm dry and oily how do I know so it really is like a cheat sheet or a reference book that you okay. can go cover to cover or just pick up when you need it but yes. that's the very first question no you don't have to have had book one to read book two they're, they're <laughs> them in any order chop and change in and out whatever suits you best that's that's great to know and what about this time of year so tomorrow is officially december oh, no. our second lockdown will be over we can go shopping we can spend <laughs> safely obviously yeah. <laughs> safely at a distance but um uh what type of things should um anyone listening watching be thinking about for their skin in cold winter seasons are there any yeah. sort of top say a couple of things that we should definitely be doing now that we wouldn't necessarily do in the summertime which we have what a couple of weeks of in Ireland if we're lucky <laughs> two days two days <laughs> now it kind of overlaps with an answer that I didn't get to say earlier apologies sorry, I <laughs> don't know your grand I don't tend to treat the skin too differently if someone is if someone identifies as a man or a woman if someone is 20 to 90 95 on Wednesday maybe, yeah. um you wouldn't I wouldn't generally treat the skin much differently simply because if I'm 12 and if I'm 95 should I have protein carbs drink water eat vegetables every day protein yes so we tend to know that there's key ingredients that we need for us internally now I'm not going to lecture or stand on a pedestal or ask anybody what they've done um but we all know that that's kind of the common theme behind it and the reality is that is then brought into skincare it doesn't have to be like I can only imagine in previous roles you've had Nadine the amount of products you must have had access to like it can be overwhelming and it's too much You yeah. just need simple. So that analogy can be brought into skincare. So to answer your question, regardless of age, regardless of gender, regardless of time of year, for me, you need a cleanser, yeah, hydrating That's serum, good. a vitamin A based serum and an SPF. So cleanse your face. It's hygiene, like remove the day, prepare the day, whatever ends the day it is, take, you know, get your skin ready for it. Hydration is like drinking my big jug of water here. It's important. Yeah. Vitamin A, I could be here for 10 hours, but I promise I won't because I used to teach in London about vitamin A and the class was four days long. So if I was to yeah. summarize okay. it, yeah. ah, even doing it in the book, they were like, Jennifer, you have to chop down the words of the vitamin A book. I'm like, okay. Um, so <laughs> vitamin A, it's the most anti-aging ingredient. It, there is a glow when someone uses the vitamin A that's undeniable. Their skin just sheens, it's healthy, it looks dewy fresh pores are little like smaller than the norm pigment is less redness is less so a is the game changer and then spf to shield your skin against the hail rain shine that we just joked about because it like i do think living on this island you tend to think that you don't need spf because we don't have the sun but we do because there's daylight so it's about not seeing sun as heat but seeing sun as the nuclear power station in the sky that it is and all you're trying to do is defend your skin from excess light so to recap, okay. it's cleansing, it's a hydrating serum like your glass of water, it's a vitamin A serum if you can. Uh, why would you choose a serum? It's lighter weight than a moisturizer, so it'll penetrate in, like we were saying. And then an SPF yeah. is to defend yourself against the elements. That's okay. genuinely Bobby basic part of it. And then if that's confusing you, try not to look at the marketing, try to just look for the ingredients on the package. Any okay. questions? Okay, okay, okay. Now I remember <laughs> lots of hype. Oh, sorry, sorry, carry on. For winter, the only thing I change is I'd probably bring in something called ceramides. So ceramides are what you naturally have within your skin. They form your natural barrier. But do you ever hear of an expression called radiator face? Ah, yeah. Is that when you get a bit dry from having the rads on? Yeah, honestly, that's exactly yeah. what they call it. So it's yeah. like, <laughs> in the world it's called trans epidermal water loss ultimately it means the water is just evaporating from your skin so mm-hmm. ceramides are an ingredient and you can get honestly dean it's so many brands that are affordable and accessible this isn't hard to find if you google them they'll just come up straight away so please don't okay. think oh my goodness it is so easy to find but when you put a ceramide ce or oh my goodness how tea tree ce or amide based oh, nerdy <laughs> on okay. your skin you'll keep it in so it's like you're kind of yeah. putting the lid of a tubware 
box on like you're keeping everything inside that's the only thing I'd really change and maybe bring in a little acid or two which are slightly exfoliating. Acid or two oh, okay yeah. hold on a minute hold on a minute or clean my skin I put the serum on I put the vitamin A on I no the moisture hydrating right. serum right. Now yeah. and now I need acids and yep. ceramides like that's like 10 things <laughs> I swear to God, it's not though. Because people always say to me, Jennifer, do you like how long do you take in the morning? I'm like, yeah. literally, I I should I shouldn't advocate this because sleep honestly is so important for the skin. But maybe yes. when you work for yourself, yeah. sleep isn't always the first thing that comes to mind. I'm working on a 2021. You won't know me, yeah. but the point yeah. is, I I don't spend a lot of time in the morning. I prefer my few minutes extra in bed. And so I literally have cleanse 60 seconds in the shower out, squirt, squirt of the two serums, put my SPF on, I'm done. Then going to bed at night, imagine I don't put SPF on going to bed at night because I'm not scared of the dark at so I can survive. Okay, fair death. enough. I'm okay. in a dark room. So I just put a moisturizer on. It takes me, promise, 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 it takes about 120 seconds, three minutes. How long does it take an average woman to put on mascara or shave themselves? It's a lot longer. A few minutes, that. yeah. And what about all those acids? Sorry, I'm just bringing up my um, questions. Oh, sorry. Siri was just trying to talk to me there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask. Siri was... She knows all Siri. the freaking answers. You don't Siri need has Siri. a question for you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we'll get to questions soon. I didn't even say that. Sorry. For anyone listening, please, please, please yeah. type in your questions. We do have time for Jen to answer a few of them. We'll be coming to them very soon. Um, oh, where did we get to? Yeah, when, when do we include all those acids? And okay. um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm already like... I think you. So, okay, right. You'll often hear of glycolic acid. That is an acid that's derived from sugar cane. It's um, it's really, really potent. So I'm quite wary of it by and large. I think if I think the reality with exfoliation, whether it's an acid or the old school granule, is that you fall in love with it because it's yeah. this placebo effect that immediately you look brighter, you feel smoother, yes. you feel good. So yeah try hold back and um, it's like a Mars bar you know it's delicious but you're going to feel it and the point is with acids if you overdo it um, I'm yeah. sure Mars bar will come out to me now apologies if I offended anybody but the point is that if you're using acids a little bit too much your skin will just become a little bit too sensitive and actually you'll become drier and more dehydrated and more irritated okay. so okay little and often like you can honestly buy an acid cleanser glycolic or lactic if you're spotty look for salicylic and what you could honestly do salicylic okay that's a mouthful isn't it salicylic acid yeah. any of those acids will be something that you only use every maybe two or three times a week so you potentially could spend 25 euro and it could last you six nine maybe 12 months at a push okay so like skincare shouldn't break the bank it shouldn't take a lot of time and it shouldn't be okay. too complicated so yeah and I know you're I know we're here to talk about your book but obviously you have your own skincare line but you've obviously okay. worked with lots of different um skincare companies as well but yeah. everything you've mentioned do you actually have all of those in your range or are there some other products that places you send people to to get what they need a bit of both okay it's good to know good yeah, to know I, my okay. goal so the brand, as you said, thank you earlier, is Skin Gradients. It is back to that dinner plate analogy of the key things that you need for your skin, you need for your yeah. skin inside. But yeah. there's so many brands I adore. As much as I look, want someone to love our brand, if there's something within it that isn't right for them, like, for example, Sally Cleanse won an award recently. And we're really grateful for the award. It was a, a UK based award. And the amount of people that tried to buy it online that I was like, oh, no, not everyone has spots. They don't need this. So it really is. Oh, ah, I see. So it became popular, but it wasn't suitable for everyone. Not for everyone. Yeah, exactly. You know, So it's about trying to make sure that you're getting the right product for your skin. And that's where okay. go to your local salon, go to your local department store, your local pharmacy. We're obviously always online. You can live chat us Monday to Friday. We're on DMs not 24 7 but we're there a lot so people have questions we're able to help but it's about trying to figure out what do you have at home already that's working take a photograph yeah. on day one take a photograph on day 28 of using a regime do you see a difference if you don't as in there's no difference in the color the texture the tone the firmness then perhaps it's not active enough for you that doesn't mean you have to bin what you have you might just need to bring one product in to kind of turbocharge what you already do so it doesn't okay. honestly need to cost the earth so patience is key. Okay. Right, Jen, are you ready for a few questions? Because I've got a long list here and I'm thinking, will we have time to get through them all? Okay. Are you okay if we start okay. on a few questions? Yeah, 100%. Okay. So what are your thoughts on collagen supplements? I've seen some of these actually, you know, you can drink them, you can take them in tablet form, 
collagen. So obviously I get told all the time, look at me showing off. Oh, Nadine, you've got such lovely skin. You've got bouncy sort of skin. <laughs> and in my head, I think, well, I must have a lot of collagen, you know. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's uh, officially correct, but I would think that collagen is a good thing for your skin. Is it? Do we need them? Do we need supplements? So, okay. So brilliant question. Thank you for sending it in. Wh- whomever did, I don't know your name. But the- yeah, I'm not sure who. Yeah, we, I don't have names. Oh, I wish we're I did. all humans. We're all one of the same. So the reality is that... I really believe in looking after the skin, like I was saying, inside, outside and top. And again, that's what the book is a nod to. That's why it's called the Skin Nerd Philosophy. So I don't believe it's fair for me to say, example, use this, let's just use the last ingredient we spoke about, acid-based cleanser and hey, voila, you'll have no line, no wrinkle. You'll just, it's not real. <laughs> so unfortunately, yeah. it's a little bit harder than that insofar as that we have to look after our mental health. We have to look after how much, you know, good food do we have? Do we drink our water? Do we have me time? point is then when we talk about collagen it's a perfect example because collagen is a protein that lives within the deeper layer of our skin so beyond the layer the product can get to that's where this particular peptide or protein lives so I always describe it like um like a house so if you imagine you have like your roof you have your walls you have your foundation the foundation will ultimately dictate how beautiful the house is how strong the house is how long it will withstand itself so what you're after saying when you complimented yourself I joke when you said there about and you're right your skin is you have so much there's so much youth in your skin how do I say that because you tend to have a lot of firmness in your skin when you press your skin it bounces back a nice way to know if your collagen is depleting or maybe you don't want to know so don't try if you don't want to know only ask yourself Uh I'm Uh really scared to hear the answer to but when you pull like if you run your finger underneath your eye and when you're looking in the mirror straight onto yourself and if you you see that the skin kind of stays a little bit longer than what you'd want or if you bend your knees and the skin around your knees kind of stays a little bit more crinkly and then you straighten back up they're really simple probably sound mental, <laughs> but it's about trying to figure out if you've got bouncing in your skin or if you pinch it like if you pinch it and it bounces back into the place originally then your collagen levels are probably quite good however if you feel that things are dropping ever so slightly and the bounce isn't there and what we call the scaffolding isn't right Honestly, okay. the main thing that makes a difference is supplement eating well, supplementation yep. and uh, some clinical treatments because no mm-hmm. eye cream can physically reach that layer. So all of the brands mm-hmm. that say our yeah. eye cream is anti-aging, what they're doing is trying to they're trying to cause um, like a cascade or they're trying to cause a little bit of trauma to trigger that layer. So to answer your question, um. collagen supplements. Hmm. the jury's out for me so we have a chemist that works full-time in the company and she does data upon data she just researches constantly I don't believe drinking collagen magically makes your collagen stimulate itself what I do believe is that when you drink example vitamin a like I spoke about earlier that helps trigger your body's own collagen so I believe Uh, in ingesting things that will help my body repair itself as opposed to drink something that I'm trying to give my body back okay that makes sense actually that makes sense okay I like that I like that you've answered that question brilliantly okay um should you wear a moisturizer and an SPF or a moisturizer with an SPF okay great question (laughs) (laughs) I love these questions I generally do yeah they're really good oh great question I read them off my computer by the way guys um, Minnie might make an appearance she's just in the other room that's when I was waving there that was her son saying goodbye so bear with me if you see a 94 95 year old woman hey. heading in that's Minnie she might pop in and say hi <laughs> I hope so, no warning. I really hope so. I, that's, I, honestly if she pops in I have so many questions for her forget about it <laughs> to be honest um, but the, the reality I suppose the question there about uh, yeah SPF on its own yeah that's and then it. a moisturizer or the moisturizers that have SPF is one better than the other are they the same do you have any thoughts yeah. on that Lo- loads of thoughts okay so um applying SPF 365 days a year does make a difference because you're preventing your skin against hail rain shine excess light as we said the reality yeah. is it's how much you apply so you're supposed to apply almost like a half a teaspoon amount from your collarbone to your forehead every single yeah. day in order to protect your skin that's what the Irish Cancer Society says the reality okay. is that we tend not to apply as much as that so we tend to see how much moisturizer that looks like and think oh goodness if I put that on now that's a lot that oh I, I'll be yeah. shiny so I think yeah aesthetics tend to stop us from applying as much as we should to get the shield the company wants you to have i.e to have that number Mm. SPF 30 or 50 or whatever so 
what I tend to say is in an ideal world, lean on the products separately. So example, like have your hyaluronic, have your vitamin A separate so that you're actually mm-hmm. feeding the skin with a checklist of key ingredients. Then yeah. buy your SPF, that is an SPF, why? Because I suppose having lived through the formulation process, when you create an SPF, your full focus is then on that, not an SPF that is, that is, that is. It's like a, it's like a shampoo and a conditioner, they're good. But if you had them separately, they probably do have a little bit more focus on what they're designed to do. Fair, fair play. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get but that. If you're, if you're like, honestly the best SPF in the whole wide world is the one you're going to apply. So like our SPF is quite lightweight, but if you like something thick, I'll honestly say to you, you're not going to like ours. If you use something heavy and moisturizing, you're not going to like our one. So use your image or your Murad or your, I don't know, your Neostrata or your whatever brand you love, number seven, okay. whatever it might be. Um, yeah. But make sure you and like you, it first. And do you think everybody needs to wear SPF? Because I've got a friend of mine, she, she's got mixed race children. And so she's white and her kids are mixed race. So she was thinking, gosh, do I, do I still need to put this SPF on my, my kids that are dual heritage, you know? Yeah. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that? Do you think everybody needs to wear SPF? Or if your skin is darker, do you not need to use it as much? What, what, what do you think with your expertise and your philosophy? <laughs> um, so from a, an actual physiology perspective, as opposed to my philosophy, my philosophy would say, yes, you do. But from an expertise and from an actual physiology perspective, in darker skins, there's a, it's a different type of distribution of melanin. So yes, you, for example, would have a, dark, a higher SPF naturally than I would. So you mm-hmm. might need to reapply less, but you, we, we both still need SPF. We need to shield and defend yeah. our skin. Not from, yeah. like, bearing in mind 90% of the aging process and when I say aging I mean accelerated aging not chronological like if you're 35 you look in the mirror and you look 35 brilliant my job is not to make people feel worse about themselves but actually just to realize that there are ways you can feel better in yourself if something is kind of getting you down but the point is that 90% of aging is actually caused by the sun so that isn't just a sun tan that isn't just sunburn that's open pores that's redness that's collagen and elastin breakdown that's sagging that's folds here that's pigmentation so when you shield your skin against that aesthetically you will tend to allow the skin to look as it did more like a child than ever before but it does take time the other thing is then it's skin cancer like we have done a lot of work in the past with the skin cancer society so for me it's important to protect your skin against light from the fact that the skin is an organ so like my son Matthew turned 17 in three hours (laughs) Oh no, I can't count. In about, maybe don't trust my numbers, in about seven hours. So the point is, he's been applying SPF to himself every single day since he's a tot. Because for me, it's as important as him brushing his teeth. Why would I teach him to brush his teeth and look after the enamel, but not actually teach him to protect his skin against light that, you know, we should be mindful of. So Fair play. Well done. And congratulations on having a 17-year-old child. Oh my gosh. I know. amazing. He has the book sitting up over his bed and I often tease him, like, have you read it yet? And he's like, mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't read the Bible, to be honest. But anyway, oh, but he is really good with his skin. And that's another question that's always asked about children. Yeah. That does yeah. not mean that they need eye creams and serums and spritz. No, but cleansing, yeah. just getting into the good habit of having good ingredients in their shower gel and their face yeah. and they're getting into the habit of brushing their teeth, get them used to that, and then putting SPF on when they need it and they're out and about. It just, it yeah. does make, it. Just, you are preventing an organ from excess damage, let's say. Yeah, no, I think that's really good advice. Thanks, Jen. I've got another really good question here. So somebody's obviously had a few piercings done. I wish we had the names. <laughs> I want to say, all right, Joanne, how many piercings have you had? But it says here, can Jen advise what might help with keloid scars from piercing? Now, I get keloid scarring, not that bad, but a little bit, you know, it goes a bit dark. So what do you recommend for keloid scarring, that sort of dark pigmentation that we can get from piercings or just scars from cuts or scratches and stuff like that? Yeah, so keloid scarring, for anyone that doesn't know, is ultimately when you've had a wound and there's collagen brought to the area as there is in any kind of cut or wound or abrasion that you might have, but it's a different type of collagen. So type 1 collagen, you were asking about the collagen drinks earlier, there's lots of different types of collagen in our body. So a stretch mark is ultimately a a, a byproduct of collagen, but it's maybe not one that people would choose to have. They're like, I don't want that type of collagen brought, I want a different one. Um, So to answer the question of keloid, it just means it's an overgrowth of collagen in the area 
the reality is with keloid scarring is that you're more probable to having it in other parts of the body. So always be careful if you ever do go down the road of having a peel or a laser treatment that it could perhaps repeat itself. It's how your body uh, remodels the collagen inside. Mm -hmm. To answer your question, treating it, I'm so sorry to be the bearer of not such great news, but honest news, and that's what you deserve. I'm wary, I'm wary to treat keloid scarring. So there are some people that were treated with microneedling, which is a form of treatment that you get done that breaks through the tissue and it helps regenerate a different type of collagen. So not the collagen that you formed, but the type one collagen, which is the healthy collagen. I personally, yeah. if it was my skin, I really would only go to someone that was a medic. And again, that's why in the book, I'm so happy to work alongside medics because I often find in the skincare world, um, a lot of therapists will try to, their best to help a client, but we're not, we don't tend to refer on. But actually, when I worked abroad, mm -hmm. that was our norm. We just, we all pooled together and helped the one human get their result. So for keloid scarring, if it's really bothering you, depending on where it is, then mm -hmm. I would, um, and I don't, sometimes people hear the word C or the sentence C, a dermatologist is quite dramatic. Actually, dermatologists aren't to be feared. They're there to help prevent. <laughs> we just tend to put them as out of our reach, but they shouldn't be. They're hard yeah. to go in with, don't disagree, but they're not to be scared so yeah that might be the only way to treat it or a doctor cosmetics a cosmetic doctor would be great as well but a therapist shouldn't really treat the scar itself okay okay well it basically means they need to get more professional advice really don't they from yeah, yeah. okay, we look okay. At it to understand i've got um i've got a question here about um oh gosh I, I always break out, people breaking out in certain areas. So okay. I always break out right under my right cheekbone. Okay. Why always in one spot? And I will admit, I, if I get a breakout, it's generally will be okay. under the chin. But I, I don't, I, don't, I almost don't want you to answer it because I don't want you to tell me that means you've got this and you're going <laughs> to, <laughs> you've got this like long term disease that's just slowly <laughs> breaking through. So, but, but this person with the right cheekbone, they'd love to know. So, why do you think they always break out with the same spot under the cheekbone? Any thoughts? It can be hard to know without knowing the background. That like that is a given. So typically in a consult, be it virtual or be it in a human to human situation, skin to skin, as we like to say, um, you would kind of decipher someone's past, present, future, what's been happening, and you notice patterns. That's the reality with anything in life. Yeah. I'm a big believer in encouraging people, and this was in book one. I asked people to fill out what we call the nerdy diary. So example I have large meetings every like the same day every single month and no matter what I break out because my body's obviously stressed even though I don't think I am so the point is I could start to notice over a period of months why things were happening when it comes to a specific part of the body as in like you know particularly on the cheekbone for that length of time that would make me try to ask things like is it the phone that you're holding is it the side you're sleeping on is it the like is uh... it the I find honestly Nadine a name shall not be named but there is a brand of bronzer I adore adore but my skin does not like it so it causes blackheads and breakouts in my skin because okay. mineral makeup is what I'll always advocate but some makeup I love the color of it the same as anybody but my skin yeah. doesn't tend to like it and I'll always break out um just where I've applied it so I'd ask about makeup I'd ask about makeup brushes I'd probably try to ask more questions but to answer the question as to how to help it just if I can do a part two so that doesn't feel like you're not getting the answer sadly okay. the facet that I mentioned earlier will really yeah. help to break down the extra oil plug that you're finding is there every second or third night just work it into the area it is related to aspirin so it's really potent um and that should help Aspirin? did you say it's related to aspirin yeah. like if you have a headache aspirin yeah yeah okay yeah. <laughs> salicylic acid and aspirin are both derived from the willow bark tree so they tend to actually overlap so obviously if you're allergic to one would be less likely to give you the other okay. so okay. the one thing i'd say about that acid is that's kind of like putting a plaster on it's not really fixing out or figuring out yeah. why and i understand they want to know why and i agree Pattern it, document it. Do you get it week one, week four of the month? Do you get it when you're stressed? Do you not? Is there a theme? Is there a pattern? And then then that's usually how you'll dig deeper. Okay, good answer. I like in this. And what let's talk about pause. Let's talk about pause. Okay. Yeah. Pause always seem to be a problem. So <laughs> What are what are what is the best thing to do if you have large pores? Can products actually change the size of the pores or or is it just like a do your best and put some makeup, the right makeup on? What what do you think about pores? <laughs> Living best. with large pores. Yeah. Do your best, I love it. Um I think the reality for me is that people, not not through people like clients' fault, brands tend to talk about products 
as if they're the holy grail and I yeah. think that's why hopefully we've built a name that people feel they can trust us because if we don't have the solution we'll say yeah. it and if it's not the answer yeah. you want to hear we'll also say it point is yeah words yeah Poor, sorry, pores have been described as doors where people think they can open and close them, but unfortunately you cannot. So just to go back to the beginning, pores are basically an opening on the skin mm. that allows oil to come out, hairs to come out. So they're needed. They're an actual opening. Like they are there for a reason. However, what tends to happen is two things. Usually yeah. you're kind of oilier. Your pore can be slightly larger because there's more oil inside it. So it tends to swell the pore as though it's more visible to the naked eye. Then secondly, that's usually kind mm. of to do with problematic skin. So teens, maybe early 20s, by and large, then people associate mm. 30s onwards as time where you don't have as much oil. Not true, but what people think. And yeah. then when you get to 30 plus, the fantastic news is you're you're in the aging process. So we're all aging, obviously, from the second we're born. How delightful and positive is this yeah. for a Monday night? But oh, I love this. I love so that exciting. I'm aging. You're aging. Amazing. Really Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's about like, about embracing it and so like from 25 onwards your natural collagen and elastin levels are diminishing that's the reality yeah. of it so when somebody comes yeah. to me and says I really want to prevent aging first of all I'll say look and I really do say this I'm like aging is to be celebrated it is actually a gift to have it but I totally get and I'm in your world that I want to like look my age as I age as opposed to older than my age yeah. What I'm trying to get at here is that that's when pores tend to become more of an issue. So when you have oily skin and your pores are large, you can use acids, you can use um, toners to kind of shrink them temporarily because you're taking the extra oil away to make the oil less, so the, the pore is less. But when you're aging, the yeah. skin is dropping. Like we know that here tends to drop. People talk about their eyelids dropping. In general, we know that that tends to happen. Even your elbow doesn't tend to be a bend. It tends to be a little kind of crinkled around it. The point is that your pore is the same. It's like, um, I'm not going to fight over whether it's called a bobbin or a go-go. What do you call it for your hair? Like a oh, a bobble, scrunchy, bobbin, elastic. <laughs> I'm going to say elastic band, okay? It's so elastic, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. fight within one county. Like, I don't call it that. <laughs> um, but let's say there's an elastic band and it's perfectly tight. And then you start to use it and use it and use it. That elastic band eventually becomes a little bit slacker. That's what's happening to your pores. And I point to the cheeks because it tends to be the cheeks, the nose, a little bit around the center of the forehead and the, and the chin that people are conscious of. Yeah. More so the cheeks. Honestly, it's a sign of aging. It's what no one wants me to tell them. They want to be told it's spot and oil and they can mop that up. But good news is that SPF will prevent against them getting larger. So shielding, okay. like we said. And guess yeah. what freaking vitamin do you think I'm going to talk about? Vitamin A. A. <laughs> so A <laughs> will help trigger your elastin. That's what's happening. That elastic band, elastin, is actually slackening. Okay. So the only thing that could bring it back is vitamin A. Okay. Okay. That's amazing. That's amazing. It's a good place to start, isn't it? Okay. So I think we've got time for one more question. Okay. And um, okay. Right. So um oh what would the last question be there's so many okay do you want to tell us quickly a little bit of a personal um do you talk about your own favorite beauty beauty trends um do you have favorite ones do you have you know would you say to somebody that's in their 30s or 40s or as a team you know this is my favorite look for you that's what you should be doing so I guess I'm merging skincare and makeup <laughs> styles as well so yeah what what's Jen's favorite look what do you love to go for you I see you always have a lovely little dark lash a little slightly bit of liner is that your thing uh for makeup <laughs> I love yeah. I suppose because I spent so much of my life trying to get my skin to a place that I feel happy in it that yes. my skin for me always has to be kind of look look like skin and when I get my makeup done for events makeup artists and they're now used to me but at the start load it on do they load it on you I try to they make it on. 10 shades darker than I am and I'm like I this is me I and sometimes they do not even have tan on and they're like oh god so in Ireland there's a culture where we just want to <laughs> tend to want to look a little bit darker point is I like skin to look like skin I do love a bit of liner I, I'm a sucker for a lash I love a little bit of lash extensions yeah. I love things. Yeah. yeah and then just yeah. like a nudish lip I, I really I'm really kind of basic when it comes to makeup but for me it's about of course it is you know what I'm going to say for me it's about the ingredients so yes. I will I will love most of the main brands as does 
any female that's given a palette yeah. or male yeah. given a palette and you just ooh and ah over it because there's a magpie inside you dying to come out and I'm in denial yeah. that I'm halfway to 70 so I still want to wear the crazy colours but we'll park that conversation halfway to 70 is that what you say yeah. who says that I'm halfway to 70 <laughs> oh dear lord <laughs> my <laughs> gosh my <laughs> gosh <laughs> But the point is that mineral makeup for me is actually like looking at the ingredients in it. I think we're forgiven. Like so many people spend so much money, time, effort, energy on their morning, which really just needs to be four steps. That's it done, as we said, and in the evening. But they don't think of the middle part of the day. And I do think you can look at your foundation to be something that sits on all day. It can either help your skincare regime or not. And so I choose mineral because it looks like skin, lasts all day and... It's, it's literally like yeah. skincare, makeup, makeup with skincare. Yes, yes. I love that as well. I love that. I absolutely love that. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. Oh, 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 we have time for one more question. We have time for one more question. Okay, okay, okay. Favorite look though. Oils, oils or butters? Oh, sorry. What did you say? I missed you then. What's your favorite type of look? Oh, mine. Oh, I'm like Parisian all the way. Um, I like a lash and a red lip and a strong brow I want to be like those French women I love me personally I love that French style because I spent a year in Paris and whether you're 20 40 60 80 women are actually become more I don't know alluring and seductive as they get older I actually think all women across the world when you get over like 50 just move to France just move to Paris <laughs> and walk around in your red lips and just be stunning because people actually appreciate that it's not like a oh my god are you, are you wearing that it's like a hmm, yes of course you're wearing that so I don't know I'm kind of into that <laughs> that well, Parisian I, seductive I, look oh yeah well who wouldn't be come on if you say Parisian and seductive in the one sentence just I, don't think it. I wouldn't actually it. like yeah. to be seductive now I couldn't cope with that <laughs> of course but I do think when I I was lucky enough to work in France for a couple of weeks only in a spa and when I was there for skincare range oh my goodness and I learned like my observation was that because you know the way you think of like Sweden or you think of Iceland and they just have like an Asian like the, the cultures the food is phenomenal but I'm looking at the yeah. Parisian people having croissants at seven or eight in the morning and all I'm thinking is it's complete inflammation you're going to get glycation which is like sugaring of the skin when your lines try to crisscross sorry so pause wondering. pause Jen pause Jen did you just say having a croissant inflamed your face in the mornings is that what you're telling me I'm right having now one croissant because as i said it's my son's birthday tomorrow i am looking forward to going to the fridge to see if there's a cake in there who knows but yeah by and large yeah by and large what, what's put into your body will have an impact but you know that right okay it is christmas day in what 20 whatever 30 whatever many days yeah, soon, soon. it's coming it's on its way it's okay right anyway point is yeah. in january what what will happen your skin will look duller it'll have slower healing you're more likely to be dry you tend to know that about a month after you've had something like a selection box fest or a mulled wine <laughs> bucket that your skin yeah. will pay the price so we know in january your skin isn't often great by and large and if you're lucky to get away with it i'm told i promise it'll catch up on you <laughs> but we know that uh, when we don't look after ourselves we see the benefit so that yeah ultimately sorry for the Parisian look you want to have don't eat the croissants in the morning it can have a negative impact if you do it a lot but you got to live that's the balance it's just it's just about being aware can I have the croissants in the evening with a hot chocolate can you say that word again just one more time can I have the croissants in the evening with a hot chocolate yeah of course I mean once it's on once it's after eight nothing happens you don't like there's no calories in it it's clinically <laughs> Um, yeah, no, no, that, that, that's life. actually genuinely correct. Thank you. <laughs> Quote from tonight's session. <laughs> from tonight's session. Okay, I have right. I want to get. I want to get back to your book really quickly. Okay. Okay. Graham Norton. He will also be featured. Red the Dublin I do the Red <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for plugging Graham Norton during your session, Jen. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> when I was signing my book, I was signing my book. The, and they told me that he had the record in Ireland for signing the most amount of books in a day and so I decided that I wanted to beat it and he won by 100 books so great. how many books I think it was like oh I can't remember five pages so you 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 have a record higher than Gra yeah. sorry I think my no. internet's going a bit you have a record higher than Graham Norton for signing oh, books. No, he has it. They told me how many it was. And I was like, brilliant, bring all the books to me. I need to challenge this because 
honestly signing books is such an honor um but I love playing games and quite a playful character says like right okay let's do this anyway nothing to do with what you said (laughs) but it's good to hear no it's good to hear so this is a great book right on a serious level everyone's going to be shopping tomorrow or tonight or online and I love when I see a book like this but who is this book good for so say I'm a granny oh sorry if I've lost you there hey guys you still there? I'm still here. Sorry. Still here. Um, say, say I'm um, buying things to my grandchildren um, and their teenagers or, you know, 30s, 40s, or I have, uh, you know, like say Minnie. Minnie's daughter is, or oh, I shouldn't say her age, but she would be slightly <laughs> over 60, slightly. Um, who is this book good? Who is this book good for? And is it just for women? Is it for men? Is it for trans people who, who, who would really benefit from this book as a gift? You know, you said it at the start, we always say the word human. So to me, the word human, H-O-O-M-A-N, is, is a spin on the word human because often in skincare, people are put into brackets of age or gender or dry or oily. And I just don't believe it's necessary. I believe that there are, like I said earlier, the key ingredients we need internally, the same as applicable externally. So to answer yeah. your question, honestly, and I'm not yeah. saying because I wrote the book, it, it, it is, <laughs> it, it, I'm really not. not like, to sell the book. This yeah. Is you're trying to it is it's honestly there's look not there's probably how do I describe it some people will not read every single page it'll be relevant to them if you're oily you're not going to enjoy the dry chapter and vice versa but there's something in there regardless of your age or concern whether you have healthy skin you want to mind it whether you just love collecting skincare you want to learn more about it there genuinely is I think the, the the thing that I did that I'm proud of about that I broken into three sections so like what to consider what you need to know and then what you need to do so it's ultimately learning understanding and then going right what's my action plan so when you are again getting Christmas presents or whether you're out buying next February March April May next year whenever you know what to look for what not to look for and I think my whole goal was to make it a little bit less confusing simpler and relevant to your skin I love that I've got one last question to you from me so when I was working as a makeup artist I was really lucky I got to meet lots of famous people and I met Will Smith right yeah and he was with his wife him and Jada it was at an event in London and I was just I looked at him and he must have been like I don't know maybe 40 I I don't I'm not sure and his skin, his skin was stunning and then his wife's skin was stunning stunning and I thought is that just money? Like, if you're loaded, <laughs> if you've got access to everything, do you think you can have gorgeous skin if you're just simply loaded and you can afford the best of the best? Or do you think you can still have a humble salary, hum- live a humble life and still be able to afford to have great things? Do you know what I mean? And have good skin. Yeah. Both. I think genetics does play a part, as you said, but a lot less than what people give a credit for and people lean on it as if it's the answer. So, mm. <laughs> and you're going to put you into that camp because because <laughs> you're like, no, yeah. so many people say, no, you're proud of it, yeah. go for it. But it is, it's yeah. so true. Like, so about 60% of it can be down to our lifestyle. So 40% yeah. is genetic, 60%, this is national stati- or global statistics, apologies. So 60% tends to be down yeah. to us. So within that, yes you absolutely can have the healthiest skin you can have on on a budget so I mean everyone's version of what's expensive will differ but I tend to find like a hundred like a couple of hundred euro you can absolutely have like a good cleanser 25 euro serum a 40 odd euro and an SPF around 40 odd euro and that will last you three to four months so it's not it's not maybe unachievable for many people and the ingredients in it are the key thing to look out for. So it's less about the steps, it's more what's in it. It's like saying I go to the gym, but I twirl or I go to the gym and I work. (laughs) I prefer twirling to be fair. But make sure you have the right ingredients in there. But yes, of course, it would be wrong of me to say that the likes of JLo who puts up beautiful photographs of herself regularly at, you know, two decades older than I and she looks insane and of course she does because a large part of what she does on a daily basis is her body and her face is her brand so she has yeah. to look after it so they do have access to facelifts I remember actually teaching my last point apologies yeah, um, yeah, yeah no please go we got time we got time yeah. the, the, I remember when I was training for a skincare um, brand there was a particular lady that came to me every eight weeks for a refresher training amazing not many people do that but she was actually working for um royalty and so her full-time job was to be 40 50 60 years 
the week working for this particular princess. So this princess was all Princess pretty- Diana. I wasn't, but I'm obsessed with the crown, but that's a different day <laughs> story. Um, so my point is that, yes, of course, people that have that much uh, that much wealth will obviously invest in in treatments and machineries and that, but please don't dwell on that. That's not to say, oh, well, I can't. You can. You can have really good, healthy skin. You can treat it as an organ. You can get the right ingredients into it. You can enjoy it. Try see it as self-care. That's what COVID has taught so many people, just to have yeah. those 120 seconds in the morning to yourself. Close the door. Let nobody else near you. Just you breathe, calm, look after yourself. Start your day right. And then the same in the evening. And they're literally like bookends to your day. No freaking pun intended. And you can have the healthiest skin. And if it breaks out, it breaks out. If it's dry, it's dry. But you can tweak it. And that's what this book is supposed to be teaching. That you can literally pick things in and out as you need it. And empower you and educate you. So you are enlightened to know what to do. Incredible. Okay. Where is my where is my little book now? Make sure I've covered everything. Okay. Jennifer Rock, the skin nerd, skin ingredients you have obviously um created lots of different things now you have the cleanse off mitt i have a few myself i do love them are you still about that life do you still think it's amazing do you think you do you still think that with whatever skincare we have we should be using these mitts to take off our makeup you know my book bear is when you see people and i see it when i remember um going to hens and that with friends and you'd be sharing bedrooms or whatever and they'd wash their face and they'd splash and they'd dash and they'd be gone i'm like sorry you haven't actually cleansed so that's where the cleanse off it it's a small mitt we have a christmas one did you see called merry mittmas because we are that cheesy you gotta own no, I yeah. <laughs> but you just literally circle your motions and it takes off whether you wear makeup or not where you should be ideally wearing spf every day so to take that off every single night is important but yeah to answer your question using an accessory like that will physically mean that you're actually really cleansing thoroughly as opposed to rub 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 squish with squid splash 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 and gone it's maybe not as thorough okay fair enough okay good to know good to know and um what was the final thing we had one one more final thing oh my goodness this top three tips across the board so of oh course my- read your books of course <laughs> jennifer get jennifer rock's books they're available at the um dubbing book festival link um but what top three things would you say to everyone give me so i know that vitamin a is obviously one of them everybody <laughs> buy vitamin a um what's the other two I think you could guess. So yeah, I think treating the skin as an organ, looking after it inside. So, you know, your supplementation, not just seeing it as food, but like how much me time do you have? Tracking it in a nerdy diary will definitely make a difference just to see patterns in your skin. The more we know about your skin, the more you can like buy products accordingly or not have to buy products, interestingly enough. So not always about buying. And then ultimately looking after the skincare brand. So yes, it's, it's beautiful. There are beautiful products out there that I adore on social. I'm always known for my Sunday facial I love like the aroma and looking after it but actually during the week I like products that truly pack a punch I don't spend a lot of money or time on it I need them to actually have an effect so you said it vitamin a spf vitamin c there are key ingredients once you have those bring them in individually take a photograph on your skin monitor 28 days later and like I was saying try and enjoy skincare it doesn't have to be confusing anything I can do to help shout um but yeah thank you so much for having me Oh my God, no, you've been incredible. So you've got your Sunday facials. What, where else can everybody find you? Would you say just go to your social media if they want to get more information? Now, do you personally give everybody these skin sessions? <laughs> like all these 1,500 people? That <laughs> no, I wish I could share myself. No, I'm really lucky. I have, honestly, I know everyone says it, but I generally have an amazing team. So no, with Nerd Network, there's a team of nerds that do consultations day in, day out. And because they do it all the time, they're experts at it. They just truly know skin. It's about asking you the right questions to help you learn what to do. So we describe it like a personal trainer in the sky. We're literally there. We have your back always. It's a membership piece. So we're constantly there. And then, yeah, on social, it's always me. I'm at the end of a DM, um, maybe not at 3am, but I'm there. And then, yes, yeah, so you can find us on The Skin Nerd. And it books Amazing. Them, and you can Amazing. find us ingredients. Well, Jen, thank you so much. I actually feel more radiant just speaking to you. I'm going to get on it with Hello. the book, eh? I'm going to make sure I do have an SPF. I'll make sure I try using that a bit more often. I don't honestly use it all the time. And just for you guys watching, thank you so much. Thank Jennifer you. Rock's book is available. Um, ch- cl- click the link for the Dublin Festival, Dublin Book Festival. There's loads of other events. Like we said, Graham Norton, the number one, the number one book signer. <laughs> 
forever. I'll let um, it go. We'll be, we'll be doing his version of this tomorrow. Amazing. I hope it's tomorrow. Yeah. It's probably but, soon. I don't know the exact date, but no, he's I amazing. think it's 1st of December. He's talking about his new book. Yeah. So, Jennifer, thank you so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. And look, see you soon. A happy birthday to your son tomorrow. <laughs> Happy birthday to Money for Wednesday. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, okay. for, thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care.